Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about fly presses. The fly presses in particular that we're gonna be talking about are the fly presses that you can buy over at blacksmithsupply.com or Old World Anvils. Those are one in the same now. Uh, there's one singular owner of both those companies. Uh, as far as I know, they are the only, they are the only current manufacturer uh, or importer of fly presses here in the United States of America. So if you're looking for a new fly press, they'll be the ones to go through. Now, they are a channel sponsor this year, so keep that in mind as we go forward and I walk you through some of the features of this number two fly press, as well as my buddy Thomas Goodymooch. You all know him and love him here on the channel as the hand model. He has bought a number five fly press and you'll see that in future videos when we do some comparison testing between these two, uh, these two fly presses. Kind of like to show you what the output is on a number two versus a number five. And, and uh, so you can see some of the differences there. But the number five is already all set up in Thomas's shop and the number two is set up in my shop. So I reached out to John over at Blacksmith Supply because I wanted to take and get a smaller fly press. Now I have a much larger fly press. I have a number six uh, fly press. It's a Sweeney Bloxage fly press. It's a great fly press, does a lot of really good work, puts plenty of squishy down on, on metal. Um, so I really appreciate that fly press itself. But I wanted to get a number two fly press for chasing work or smaller work. That's, uh, you know, doing texturing, doing repetitive, um, chasing operations where I need long lengths to be very set up in one kind of uh, way. So, you know, like making a guide, a bump rail where I can make one nice, really even chasing. And I needed a little less um, output uh, as far as tonnage to do that because I wanted to be very accurate and chasing is a fairly slow process and you want to kind of have a little lighter blows with it uh, before going whole hams. The number six fly press I own, it, it just, you know, crushes right through a piece without you even thinking about it. So to take and start off, many people are probably gonna ask this question. What are the prices, right? You know, before we go much further, let's kind of talk about current pricing right now. This is what you, if you went over to the Old World's Anvils, that's what I've got this picked up. Uh, that's what I got pulled up on now, or Blacksmith Supplies website. Uh, this is what this is what you can expect roughly now this is less shipping so they're still shipping uh, to your location that you have to calculate to your own location on top of that john's a really great guy to work with uh, on that he'll definitely work with you uh, on that to take and help you out get that figured out but so he carries everything from a zero a number zero number one two three four five six and eight on special order only so for a number two fly press, this fly press in, uh, in question, a number two will run you about $1,335. So if you wanted to take and get a number two fly press, just like what you see it here, without all the extra stuff, you know, because again, I've added some tooling to this now, just your base model number two fly press is gonna cost you about $1,335. The number five fly press that Thomas did purchase, Thomas purchased that outright. The number five fly press came in at $2,300 and eight, well, $2,380 is what it came in, $2,380 US dollars. Again, shipping is an additional to that if you're not located enough that you can go pick it up in person. So, uh, so there's a little bit about the price, you know, so, so the price is, is what it is there. On a used fly press in the used fly press market, you can be looking on a used fly press of spending anywhere from about $1,500 on upwards of four to five grand, depending on the fly press. So that's, that's kind of where you're looking at, generally speaking. So the, the prices are really fair to get a brand spanking new fly press that you don't have to worry about maybe the guides being worn out or you know the screws being jacked up by somebody or whatever have a ton of backlash in it. Uh, so to talk a little bit more about this, it does come with you know quite an extensive package of information. Uh, the fly press does. 
It comes with a, a nice packet of information. Now this is a Karachi fly press. This is made in India. Um, you know, and so there with saying that, with it being made in India, there are some uh, tolerance issues that you may run into. Like they had a lot of goopy paint and grease. They actually had a, a lot of goopy paint inside of these uh, threaded holes for your rods that yeah, just we just had to wire brush and clear out. And then it also had some heavy, heavy, heavy grease in there that had to get cleared out just for us to screw the handle in. You know, there's going to be like little cosmetic things like that where, again, they just didn't, you know, it, it's, it's India. You know, it comes from India. But I will say, as far as uh, the machine's tolerances and its function, it functions very, very nicely and very, very well nice and smooth like you would expect a brand new fly press to go to actually do but the applications let's go over some applications for the fly press obviously you have embossing punching cutting pressing stamping and deep drawing etc so that from the base to the guide on a number two we've got five and three quarter inches or 146 millimeters from the center to the back we got three and three quarter inches to uh, 95 millimeters uh, we have the diameter of the screw is, uh, drop it down here, the diameter of the screw is 1 and 11 sixteenths or 43 millimeters. The hole through the base is an inch and three quarter hole or 44 millimeters. The hole through the base with ring, that's non-existent. So on the bigger fly presses, you kind of have a plug that goes in. It's a ring that makes that hole smaller and it's much bigger underneath. Uh, you, you can make it much bigger or choke down smaller. That doesn't apply for this fly press. The stroke length is something that you need to take into consideration. The stroke length on this is four and a half inches because it being a number two fly press. Diameter of flywheel, that's important. So, you know, that's gonna be your kind of your max dimension that you're gonna have to play around with if, you know, you're building a stand or something else in there. Your max dimension on that is 19 and a quarter inches or 260 millimeters for a number two. The height of the body in total is 21 and a half inches or, five, or 546 millimeters uh, for this. And then the total weight of the machine for this machine is 100 kilograms. And now, so that's all the specs on the number two. Now the number five, I'll go over those really quick. Base to guide is eight inches. So from five and three quarters, we're going up to eight inches or 200 millimeters. Center to back is five and a quarter inches or 133 minute millimeters. The diameter of the screw is inch and seven eighths or 48 millimeters. The hole through the base is four inches or 102 millimeters. The stroke is five and three quarter, five and three quarter inches or 148 millimeters. So the stroke is that's how much ram you've got to play with there. Then if I go diameter of the flywheel on the number five is a 23 inch diameter flywheel with 587 millimeters. Height of the body is 28 inches, 28 and three quarter inches or 733 millimeters. And the total weight of the machine is 200 kilograms. So the total weight of the machine is 200 kilograms. So there you go. So there are some of the specs about the fly presses for both the number five and the number two. Like I said, we'll go in more in depth with the number five when I've got it in, uh, in hand. And, you know, we'll be doing some comparison testing between those. But I just wanted to rattle those off real quick. Uh, this did come with a Karachi badge that, that was supposed to go on here and get kind of knocked on there. I chose to just put the blacksmith supply sticker on it for this year because, well, hell, it's there. And this little badge, it, I tried to fit it and it just kind of fell off. So I'm like, ah, eh, that works out okay. Inside the information packet, you do get like some best, uh, you know, some of the best case or how, how to use the fly press and what to look out for. And, you know, and that comes not from Karachi, that actually comes from John at blacksmithsupply.com. So, uh, you know, it says important tips on extending the life of your new fly press. Uh, you know, the, there's just a lot of stuff about how your tools should be set up. You got to make sure they have shoulders on them so they don't jam up into the hole of the fly press. Um, they talk about chisels, punches, fullers, drifts, side sets, tenon dies, 
uh, they have some great little informational here if you do buy one of these. So again, it kind of helps get you it gets you pointed in the right direction. There is one thing in this, the whole reason why I'm mentioning this, you might be like, really get to the point. If you're serious about buying one of these fly presses, that's, out, that's why I'm assuming you clicked on this video, then you need to watch through and listen to all of the information here in that I'm trying to provide for you to help you have a better uh, buying experience. But to get on with it, so one of the things that I wanted to take and make mention of on this because it was one of the things that I found with this machine right out the gate is that it needs a lot of cleanup. It needs a lot of cleanup because they put a boatload of thick, tacky, and I mean it's as sticky as can be grease. It's almost like glue. It, it, that's how mine came. It, it's sticky. I mean it's it's on there and so it almost made it like that fly press was froze up it's like gee whiz this thing's hard to turn in the spot and it is coated in that really heavy thick sticky grease i don't know what it is that they put on it but it ain't coming off there and it sure as hell ain't letting any moisture get to it that's for sure so number three item in john's uh thing of here the stuff to, that he talks about is do not use grease on the fly press. Use a lightweight motor oil, i.e. 10W or 5W, so 10 weight or 5 weight. So that could be like a 10W30 or a 5W30, something like that. You wanna use a lightweight motor oil, uh, or you can use something like a compressor oil. If you have like some compressor oil, that's a nice thin oil. You really don't want to over oil these machines. If you over oil them, they collect shop grit and they pull that down through the guides. Uh, it actually pulls that junk down into the guides and then you can get some scoring and stuff as a result, which will hurt your tolerances ultimately in the long run. So what did I have to do to get rid of the gunky grease? And this is gonna be my first suggestion to you if you do purchase one of these fly presses, is use WD-40 liberally. I find it to be one of the best sol almost solvent-like cleaners that is still in an oil of some sort. It's a, a water displacement tool. I really do love using the WD-40 to take and spray on everything in the guides, and you can just watch that grease on these just run right off. And so I did have to take and apply that liberally. I had to clean this thing to no end uh, to take a get this to function properly. So the proper function of a fly press when you're using it, it should naturally go down by, all by itself. You shouldn't have to take and push it to make it go down. If you're pushing it to make it go down, if you got to pull on this to actually make it go down, then some, you need to check out something. Something may be tight. The guides might be too tight. You need to actually go through a little bit of checking. You shouldn't have to work with it that hard. So I'm a big fan of this. This is done. I've done a small little chasing project on it already. I built an entire table for it for a clamp or stake down table. Uh, so I'll go over that real quick. The clamp downs that are provided with it uh, and the bolts that are provided to hold the clamps down to actually hold a piece, in my opinion, on this small machine are inadequate. They should have sized the clamps down in size to fit the scale of this machine. These are the same clamps and the same bolts that are used on the much bigger number five fly presses. And I'm assuming, I'm just making an assumption here, all their other fly presses as well. So the clamp or the hold down tools for this little of a, uh, little of a machine where they're positioned is not conducive to good work in my opinion. So, you know, it, it, they get in the way. They just get in the way of anything you're trying to do. You can't fit very wide material. So I had to 86 that right out the gate. And what I ended up coming up with was I just drilled and tapped my own big plate, surface plate for my own purposes. And then I mounted, I got some big flush uh, bolts and I mounted that to the surface and adapted this for my own purpose. So that's gonna bring me to a point about buying tooling of any kind. Power hammers, presses, hydraulic or fly, treadle hammers, you name it. As a blacksmith, you will have to adapt 
tools to fit your own needs. So be prepared to do that no matter what you buy. Even the used fly press that I bought, again, this old Sweeney Bloxage fly press that I got, that's a number six, it's sitting over here just out of frame. That fly press, I have adapted in so many ways, made all sorts of tooling, made adapters to you know, reduce the amount of length of stroke that the ram had to be out. I had to adapt that for my purposes. Talking about mounting and bolting options, they do provide you with a wrench, which is nice. It's a USA made, KND, a 19 millimeter wrench. Uh, that is handy for the hold down pieces. It's also handy for your stop nut. So those are all uniform. So the hold downs and the stop nets, that's all uniform in nature. I also used, uh, so I also used the bolting bolts that came with it when it was bolted in the crate. I actually used those bolts to mount the fly press to the new stand. They were perfect. I welded up a stand out of some quarter inch plate and some angle iron legs and uh, they were the perfect length to just bolt everything up. So save your bolts that you uncrate it from. On the number five fly press, everything that comes with, everything that is with this unit uh, on the number five fly press, almost every bolt that needs to be turned or can be turned is 19 mil. So like one wrench does it all, uh, including your tool holder. I swapped this out for an Allen key because I use Allen keys on my other fly press and all the tooling was very, uh, I like all my tooling to be symmetrical across the board. So that's what I used on that. But it is nice that they send you a wrench to do all that with, uh, and it's good to go. Uncrating, the, uncrating these fly presses is really, uh, you know, you can have that done in a GIF. It's not very hard to do. Uh, you do have to, you know, unthread it from the bottom of the box. You have to be careful when you're pulling out you know, when you're pulling out things like the flywheel and stuff like that, you don't want stuff just bashing around. So you just gotta use a little bit of uh, intelligence, just a little bit of common sense when you're taking pulling those out. I will say having an engine hoist to pull them out of the top of the box, if that's what you're doing, or breaking down the whole sides of the box might be what you wanna do. I wanted to actually preserve the crate because the crates they came in were super nice crates. So I wanted to take and preserve those for other purposes, for storage here around the shop um, and make use of some pallet racking. So I wanted to take and save the crates. That's why I pulled them out through the top versus just busting open the box and taking down the sides. These are heavy, so you will need to take and phone a friend, uh, bring a buddy or have some way of lifting it onto a stand safely. Uh, these are not light machines. I know I'm sitting next to it. You're like, Roy, how heavy can this number two be? It's heavy. <laughs> it's, it's heavy. I mean, you could pro I could probably bear hug it and manhandle it around, but if not for any great length of time, it would be better to take, uh, that's why we use, you know, chain hoists and hydraulics and other things like that to move this stuff around. Um, and then Thomas's machine, out of the question. You're not gonna hoof that thing. It is super heavy. Uh, number five is a lot heavier. Just like my number six, man, that was a whole operation just to get it up onto its stand where it sits now. So yeah, um, that is the unboxing experience. I know I've tried to cover a lot of information in this video. Uh, I'm trying to cover like a lot of the, just the key points and the aspects of the fly presses. I was on the fence about fly presses originally because I'm like, well, it's not like a hydraulic press. And anytime I seen videos of guys using them, you know, you got the guy, you know, it's a complete dingback. He's running around in a circle and he's jumping and he's holding onto the handle and it's like, boom, and he's like, you know, shaking all over the place and, you know, whipping around like a rag doll. And I'm like, ugh, if you gotta do that, like just hit it with a hammer or get something else that's a better thing than a fly press. Well, since I've purchased a fly press, I found one in my local area that was good to go and getting to use it. I was like, whoa, mama this thing's nice. And I like using it even more than the hydraulic press that I own. So it just, cause it's quieter, it's quiet. You could have this in suburbia and be just silently forging all night long and never have a problem disturbing a neighbor one. And uh, I, I really appreciate that about the fly presses. They're super quiet and they do put out a lot of force for only being a six ton capacity. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please check out the sponsored 
link down in the description down below. Now that is not an affiliate link. I do not get any kickbacks for any of that. You can just go over there. I will leave the links to the websites to go so you could go check out all the information for yourself in the description uh, box down below. So be sure to check that out as well as any other additional information or addendums that I find that I might have to make to this video in the future. Be sure to check out the description. So that's it. God bless each and every last one of you and be prepared to see a lot more of these fly press uh, videos in action around here at Christ Center I work.